so thank you and welcome to our part three of the Power BI reporting series. This week we'll be talking about the environmental dashboard and I'll get into a bit of the report server as well as a quick sneak peek into our future webinars. Um, as, uh, as always, my name is Gossam El Rafi. I'm the Power BI specialist here at the iTrack 365 team. Uh, you know, we'll talk about spills releases, kind of the the way I've managed those previous dashboards in the health and safety dashboard and how I've made those fit to the environmental dashboard. And, you know, I'll kind of talk about the data integrity setup we have currently that will make sure that when there's a spillage or company, it's being tracked and tracked with the with the utmost integrity. Before I begin, I'm just going to jump into the report server. So what the report server is and um, the way it works is we have kind of two steps, potentially three with the Power BI scene. You have the Power BI report server, you have Power BI desktop, which is where the actual magic happens in creating the reports. And then you have Power BI mobile. However, Power BI mobile is, uh, is hardly used as it doesn't have the best UI compared to working on a computer. But what this Power BI report server does is it costs twelve dollars and sixty cents, I believe, per user um, to access it, and you'll get the security of Microsoft, and you get actual scheduled refreshes as well. So you can see here on the columns we have refreshed, which is when the data was last refreshed, and then you have a next refresh as well. So if I were to go into the settings of any data set, I could actually go into scheduled refresh, and I can keep my data up to date by saying daily, weekly, and then you actually add time. So let's say, let's say you know, for an environmental one, you want to have it every 8 a.m., every morning at 8 a.m. for when you come to work. That way you can make sure your data is ready and you're kind of primed to go, right? And there's no, there's no really shortage of how many times you can, you know, refresh the data, right? Uh, the other thing that you can do, which is pretty cool, is you can, um, you know, obviously have your security set up pretty well so on the top right here you can have people access a workspace much like you would in microsoft teams so for example right now i'm the only user of this um of this workspace but if i wanted to i could search for aaron Pazek and i can add him as a member and then he would now has access to all these workspaces and this can also actually be done on an individual level um per um kind of report as well Right, so if I go into settings of the report, you can kind of scroll down to manage permissions and you can actually add Aaron there as well. All right, and then once you go into environmental Power BI, which is the actual dashboard itself, there are a couple things you can do here as well, which, which are pretty cool to highlight. So one of them being you can actually export the reports into PowerPoint PDF in case you had any safety meeting or if you had anything that you wanted to share to a wider audience offline. You can actually share the entire report in Teams, and through there you can actually chat and tab, and you can talk about kind of some of the findings that you find. You can edit it at a very base level, much like you would in Power BI Desktop with the report server. And then the last thing you can do, which is pretty cool, is you can actually create bookmarks for yourself. So let's say, for example, you're looking at this environmental dash, which we'll get into, and you're filtering by Calgary. You can actually create a report, call add a personal report, Call it Calgary, then hit save. And now, whenever you go away from that Calgary slicer, you can actually use that bookmark to get back to how the report was. So there's a couple of features here. And then if you get into Power BI Premium, that's when you start getting into the data um, analysis using AI and R and all that kind of fun stuff. But the report server is a great way for you to showcase to your team the reports at a at a pretty available cost. The last thing that's possible with this report server is you can actually go to file. You can actually embed the report to a public website. Um, obviously, the risk of this is you can actually scalp the URL itself to gain access to this report. But what this does is I can actually hit copy. And if I open up an incognito tab, which makes me no longer have access to my personal iTrack 365 user, and I paste that same URL, I can just access that report through a you know different version of the report server. And this is really good if you have, you know, a bunch of safety stats or if you have, um, you know, some reports that you might want to show some operators on field without having to, to pay up for that $12 uh, a user. 
in case you had maybe a thousand operators on field that would only use Power BI once in a while. So there's the pretty good workarounds here, but that's just a quick little taste of what the report server is and kind of how Power BI Desktop gets into the report server. And before I begin, um, just to make some disclaimers. Obviously, the environmental Power BI is one of our newer ones. Uh, we've we've uh, really spent time focusing on incidents and health and safety to make sure that those, you know, TRIF, LTIF, and all those formulas are done correctly. Um, but the feedback that our community gives is, you know, really shapes this report. So the more, I mean, we, until we talk to, you know, let's say one of the environmental companies who has problems with consumption, they want to see how, how the hydrogen consumption and uh, electricity consumption hits with their specific um, needs. If that report there is generic enough, we actually just push it into the module and make it widespread throughout the community. So that's kind of how um, things have been going. The other disclaimer I'll make is that I like to make these webinars interactive. So if at any point you have any questions or you know, you're really itching to see if one report is possible, feel free to unmute yourself uh, at any time and then just ask the question and we can uh, we can kind of have the discussion live. Cool. So without further ado, let's begin. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into how Power BI looks. That was part one of our webinar series, and if you need to go back and watch that video, please do so on our on our YouTube channel. But what I will do is very similarly to our um, HSC dashboard. You know, it's a bit smaller than the the data model we had there, but the same idea exists. Here are all the the fields related to environmental, so your contacts, your accounts, your employees, um, with a bit more that goes into it regarding form spill release, the materials, and it actually comes with a conversion table in case people aren't, um, um, you know, st standardizing everything to a certain meters cubed, liters cubed, or whatever it may be. The data model is substandard, so all you'll have to do is plug in your specific URL and you'll get the data right away. Um, it's, you know, it's cleaned up in the sense that most of the tables only have what you need, which is a relationship ID and a name, much like in the health and safety um, dashboard. The other thing that this does is if you do not use Power BI or you have an analytics team who might not be comfortable with iTrack, we can actually just share them this PBX uh, Power BI desktop um, file, and then they're able to uh, you know, use the tool or use any tool they, they want with this data model in mind. So it's a pretty good starting point for any new reports. Okay. And as always, if you just want to export raw data, you could just go into the table on the left hand side, filter through some of the tables you already have, and then you're able to start hit right click, copy table, and then go into Excel if you're more comfortable making some power queries there as well. All right, so let's get into the report. Um, so as always, I do like to keep my reports pretty um, standard. So on the left hand side here, we have our form business unit slicer. Uh, this will allow you to filter through the data and through the charts dynamically. So if I were to click Edmonton, you can see at the bottom here, the form number becomes 2886. And if I go to Calgary, the form number actually also changes there as well, as well as the other more potent visibles, visuals. Sorry. Um, the next thing we have up here is the occurred date. The way it works is you actually select date one and you can filter from October 1 all the way to November 5th. And if you want to make that a bit more tight, it's as simple as just clicking a random date on the calendar and you can see everything sort of dynamically changes. Or you could just use the slicer here, but obviously with the bigger data set, if you have data going back to 2013, this little slider here might be a bit harder to control. Um, and then on the top right, you know, we have is this bill reportable to the government? Yes or no? Just an extra little layer of uh, going deeper into into your stats to see how the spills have been going. All right. And then bottom left here, we have material. What material was built? And you can filter through some of those as well. And if you want to select multiple of them, you can actually hit Control Click like you would anywhere else, and you can see some of the the, the lines filter in and out. Um, and, at, and as always at the bottom, um, the tape, the columns you see here are pretty, um, you know, standard, but you can add anything you want. Um, granted, it sits on the form table or is related to the forms. 
so currently we just have form type, form number, the description, you know, who, which, what was the employee who reported it, and then I say volume times sum of conversion to make sure that everything is pretty standard. I have it to meters cubed, I believe. The material that was spilt, the occurred date, and then this form link as always, as I mentioned, will just lead you back into the portal for you to see the incident report form um, to get you, you know, making sure that everything was filled out correctly. The descriptions are there and everything that needs to be filled out is filled out. All right. So that's just going to be the monitor your spill releases. Um, the next one is going to be your action registry. Um, this is very similar to the health and safety one. And what it does is on the left hand side, you have FBU. On the top, you have you know your date slicers and your form task status as well. And this just allows you to see the actions that are required to be completed um, you know, through your environment. So we see here that I have a from my user, Council Morafi. The description is to lay down spill pads on top of spill. You know, it was due the January 14, 2021. Or sorry, it's due January 31st. I haven't done it. Therefore, this line then becomes orange. If this line were to be yellow, it would mean it's due. And then if it's green, that means it's complete. Uh, so it's pretty standard there. And you can actually filter through completed status, completed requests, and requested requests. And if you look at everything all around the board, you can see that you know on average we're giving about two weeks for you to complete the task. However, um, you know it's only been one completed and three overdue. So it's just uh, especially with with spills, we know that the longer a spill goes on for, the bigger the damage and the bigger the cost. So you really want to make sure that the the actions associated to a spill or to any kind of environmental incident does get finished uh, in a timely manner. And then next we have our monthly reports, just like we did in the health and safety one. Um, you know, pretty standard here. You have how many forms are created in the month of October. From those forms that were created in October, what were the statuses? You can see a lot of them were stuck in draft, which isn't necessarily good, meaning they weren't signed off properly. And at the bottom here, you can see I created one on the 21st day of October, and I created five on the 26th of October. And the top right here with this bar chart, we have forms submitted by FPU. So you can see I have three submitted in Edmonton, two in Calgary, and one in Grand Prairie. All right. Now the cool thing about Power BI, and I kind of touched point on this last time, is that if you actually select any of the bar charts, everything else will filter as well. So I've here I've selected Edmonton, and you can see these are the three form numbers that exist, and this is the day that they were created. And if I were to select Calgary and Grand Prairie by using Control Click. You know, this acts as a pseudo slicer to your data as well. So everything kind of dynamically works together whenever you, you know, select any of these options. Cool. And the last thing that we do have with the environmental dashboard, which we actually will be putting into the uh, health and safety dashboard as well, is, you know, data integrity. So if we're looking at, you know, maybe a client that's been with us since 2013, and this client has had, you know, hundreds of incidents, hundreds, hundreds of spills. And as you start using the system more and more, there's obviously, you know, user fatigue is a is a very common um, um, issue, right? So as they fill out these incident forms, they might start getting lazy. They may start looking at these forms and saying, hey, you know, I filled out this form a hundred times. I know that everything's going to be yes anyways. Let me just skip that part of the inspection, or let me just quickly check through all of them on a pencil and paper. And what this does is it, re it can really bring up some of the lines, you know, for as, as an example here. If Aaron here is our operator on site and he notices a spill, but he really classifies it as a near miss or he classifies it as an injury report. These little steps here are really important to, um, you know, cleaning up our data and make sure that everything was classified and reported correctly. So what we've kind of done here is, you know, we have the tables on the left hand side just showing that raw data. And then we have the charts on the right hand side um, that show, you know, how the data actually is visualized, right? So we see here out of the 45 spills, we've had 45 of them that contain material and one of them or 2% of them that do not, which is this form number. And then you can actually open up that form link and make sure you go back into that spill and ensure that that material um, uh, is filled out correctly, what was actually spilled. The next one is we have of all of the um, incidents that are classified as environmental, how many actually contain a spill? So you can see here that we've created eight 
incident reports, and two of them do not contain a spill, even though they were classified as that environmental classification. And the final one at the very bottom, you know, is that reportable question. Um, you know, it's, most of the time it's required. However, some bugs can happen and that field doesn't get filled out. But if there was a spill that needs to be reported to the government, we we, we need to know that, that data. So then you're also able to just go in, open that form link and make sure your data is clear. Um, and this data integrity chart and these dashboards will obviously be improved or, and be, you know, updated a lot quicker and more than the visuals, just as we kind of see how, you know, our clients are, are lacking in that department. That's really what Power BI is for. Is, is as much as it is for visualizing, it can really be used as a good cleanup tool in uh, cleaning up your your environment and making sure that everything is um, recorded properly. So that's really all I had for the environmental dashboard. Like I said, it's a newer module, and we will look be looking into some consumption reports in the future here. But for the time being, the spill release and the data integrity are going to be your two tools to set you up for success. Cool. Um, now, if you are not an iTrack client, we actually do have App Source um, available, and in, in that App Source um, for iTrack 365, you actually are able to see our health and safety dashboard, and able to go in there and play around with Power BI in that embedded embedded report that I showed you earlier. Um, you can always follow us on LinkedIn for more updates regarding these modules or any of the webinars coming up. And should you have any questions, you can message support at itrack365.com and I will reply to you as quick as possible. And even if you want to see this module um, at a first hand with the, um, with the Power BI desktop file, please let me know and I can send you that over with some of our documentation as well. And if there are no follow-up questions, uh, you know, please send the recording to your people uh, and your company. And I will see you guys next week for the inspections dashboard.